the RTX 50 series already? Let's talk about it. That's right, you heard me correctly, we're already talking about the RTX 50 series just shortly after the 40 series launched. What is going on? Is it actually going to be right around the corner and how fast is it actually going to be? Well, let's discuss all that stuff in today's video and of course, if you're not subscribed already, make sure to do so as I'll have a ton of new info on not only Nvidia but also AMD and Intel upcoming GPUs. But enough about that, let's get into this leak. So this information is actually coming from the leaker Red Gaming Tech who has actually gotten quite a few things right in in the past, but the question is, is the stuff he's sharing today also correct? Well, let's go ahead and take a look at what he had to share about the RTX 50 series. Now, according to Red Gaming Tech, taking a look at his first slide here, this is kind of breaking down the general stuff around NVIDIA's RTX 50 series Blackwell GPUs. Now, apparently, this is going to be based off of the TSMC 3 nanometer node, which has been customized for NVIDIA. So that's actually going to be an upgrade over the 4 nanometer node that they're currently using and should allow them to get more performance and lower power draw. Apparently, it also is going to have a massive overhaul to the architecture, and the SM units are going to be seeing a new structure, which if you don't know what those are, just in case you can basically think of these as the cores like you would see in a CPU though of course they are going to be quite a bit different but apparently also it's going to have advanced denoising technology a further focus on ray tracing and path tracing and it will actually be using a monolithic design for the GeForce products and MCM is only going to be happening for HPC so no we're not going to be seeing multiple GPUs glued together at least this time around but moving on apparently it's also going to have GDDR seven support which makes sense it's gonna have pci gen 5 and i'll throw this one in guys even though he didn't mention it it's also very likely going to have display port 2.0 or 2.1 as well to drive those super high refresh rate and high resolution monitors but moving on apparently it's gonna have a clock frequency target of over three gigahertz and the performance versus the previous generation is supposed to be two to 2.6 x now apparently the 2.6 x performance is likely for hpc and the 2x performance target is for GeForce, but are they actually going to be able to achieve that 2x performance increase over the RTX 40 series, which is already an astounding performance increase over the RTX 30 series? Well, we'll definitely have to take a deeper look, but I do have my concerns as to whether or not they can actually achieve that. Now, breaking it down a little bit further, apparently the HPC variant will have 256 SMs, a 5120 bit HBM3 memory system, and 128 megabytes of level 2 cache, which is very, very impressive. Now, now the GB102, which will be the gaming variant, will apparently have the same 144 SMs or just over 18,000 CUDA cores that we will be seeing on the RTX 4090 Ti, which is very strange. It'll have the same 384-bit bus, but it will be using GDDR7, have the same 96 megabytes of level 2 cache that we're expecting to see on the 4090 Ti, but it will be, like I mentioned earlier, using PCIe Gen 5 X16. So that's definitely very interesting, and it raises a lot of questions because it has the same SM count as the RTX 4090 Ti, which will likely be launching in not too long. Well, then how are they going to actually get two times the amount of performance? Is that even possible? And well, let's go ahead and take a look. So if we look at the 4090 Ti versus the 3090 Ti, just to give you guys a reference of what we can expect, well, there we're talking about 142 SMs over 82 SMs, which was a 76% increase. Now, there was a lot of other stuff in the 4090 Ti, such as clock speeds that were improved over the 3090 Ti, and overall we did end up getting a very substantial close to 80% performance increase, or at least I think we will be seeing that when the 4090 Ti launches versus the 3090 Ti, and this actually does raise some red flags, because here we had a situation where they had way more shaders and clock speed, and they still couldn't actually achieve the 2x performance targets that I think they were trying to hit. Now, they did get close, but they didn't quite do it, so how are they going to do it with the same amount of shaders on the RTX 50 90Ti. Well, in theory, they're going to have to have a very large IPC increase and very large clock speed increase. Now, it is likely they will be seeing a large clock speed increase, but will it be enough? Well, let's find out. Honestly, guys, I think the best we could actually be seeing out of this would be maybe like a 30% IPC increase if they do choose to finally fix some of the bottlenecks in their architecture, one of which could be something like, I do believe half their FP32 cores are actually doing FP32 plus int, and that can actually cause some issues in the pipeline. So if they separate all their FP32 cores and their integer cores, who knows, stuff like that 
could actually give them a decent IPC uplift, but even if they do stuff like that, I think we're probably talking about around 30% IPC at best. So if the 4090 Ti, for example, is giving you 100 FPS, and then that brings you up to 130, and then let's say they get 40% higher clock speeds, then that would bring you up to around 182 FPS, and that is not going to be achieving the 2x performance increase that they're likely targeting. And guys, this would probably be the best case scenario, and I'll flash you guys on screen what the specs of a GPU like this would look like. You can see with the same SMs and CUDA cores, but it does also have a much higher 3.5 gigahertz clock versus the 2.5 gigahertz I'm expecting to see on the 4090 Ti. And of course, that's GDDR7 running at 36 gigabits per second on a 384-bit bus, giving them 1,728 gigabytes per second, a massive increase over the bandwidth on what we're gonna be seeing on the 4090 Ti. But even that is unlikely to achieve the 2X, and realistically, guys, I don't think 3.5 gigahertz is gonna be achievable by this architecture. Who knows, maybe it is, but I think it's unlikely. What I think is more likely is that if they are going to have the same amount of SMs and they don't change that, which who knows, maybe they will and some of this information will change with time, but if they don't, then I think what we're likely going to see is probably around a 20% IPC bump and a 30% clock speed bump, so a little bit less than the best case scenario. And in that scenario, if the 4090 Ti, for example, is giving you 100 FPS, well then if we do the math times 1.2 times 1.3, that would give you 156 FPS on the 5090 Ti. Oh no, the humanity! Only a 56% performance increase. How are we gonna survive? Obviously, guys, 56% is very, very good. So, in my opinion, do I think they're gonna actually be able to give you guys two times the amount of performance? It is possible, technically, who knows, maybe there's some stuff we don't know yet, and they'll bump up the SMs, but based on these early leaks, it seems very, very unlikely, and it seems more likely to get around when it actually launches of real gaming performance somewhere closer to 50% faster than the 4090 Ti. And guys, please do remember, 50% more performance is absolutely ridiculous. That is a huge, huge performance increase, and that's something that we just simply don't see in really many other industries that I can think of. So if we do still only get only 50% more performance in the 4090 Ti, I would still be very, very happy with that. And that would be a massive, massive performance increase, especially if who knows, maybe the 2X performance is more towards like the ray tracing. I could see that being true where maybe the ray tracing performance is massively increased. And if that's the case, then yes, this will definitely still be a absolutely fantastic GPU in a massive performance increase over the RTX 40 series. But hey, that's just what I think. Do you think the 5090 Ti can really achieve two times the performance of the 4090 Ti? or do you think they're gonna fall short? Let me know your guys' thoughts in the comments below, and of course, I'll see you in the next video. If you made it to the end of the video, be sure to drop a like. Every time you do so, AMD and NVIDIA release new GPUs. Also, if you wanna see more, check out one of these related videos. You won't be disappointed.